Hello, in this lecture, we will be calculating inventory under the FIFO method. We will be using this information here. We'll be plugging it in to this worksheet and then posting the entries related to these transactions so we can get an idea of what is happening. In later lectures, we will compare the same data source to the similar calculation under LIFO, under weighted average, and under specific identification. So these are inventory choices in terms of how a company is going to account for their inventory. And first, we will take a look at the first in, first out, which is a fairly intuitive type of method that uh, can be used to calculate inventory. It's a cost flow assumption. So let's take a look at our data and post out this information. So on 3-1, beginning inventory is 100 units at a cost of $50 per unit. So we've got the, the units and we've got the cost that we will account for. Our worksheet over here, we've got the purchases, we've got the cost of merchandise, and we've got the inventory over here. This is the ending inventory on the books. Cost of merchandise, we're going to be dealing with the cost of the merchandise, not the sales price. I'm going to try to distinguish those two as we go. And then the purchases column over here. So we're going to start off on 3-1. And in this case, I'm not going to put the purchase in there because I'm just going to start off with ending inventory. So we have ending inventory at this time of 100 units and there's a unit cost of 50. I'm going to hit tab. And so the total cost then, we're going to multiply those two out. I'm going to, of course, use a formula to do that. I'm going to hit the equal sign in cell M7 here and put the left arrow twice, that 100 times, left arrow once, the 50. In order to, to stay in the same cell and see that calculation, we're going to hit Control Enter and note that calculates it. We, of course, can see the calculation in the formula bar up here and the 100 times 50 is 5,000. I'm going to pull that over here as well and have our total column on the outside as well because later on we will have more than one layer. At this time, this would be the dollar amount in ending inventory. This would be the quantity related to that dollar amount. All right, then the second transaction says on 3.5, we purchased 400 units at $55. So I'm going to put the date here. I'm going to go to the next uh, layer of transactions. I'm going to put 3.5. And in this case, we are going to purchase. So I'm going to stay in the purchase area. These three columns are related to purchase. And we purchased 400 units. I'm going to select tab at $55. So here's the units we got. Here's the price of those units. I'm going to multiply those out by using a formula by saying equals left arrow twice till I get to C8, which is 400 times left arrow once the 55. And I can select control enter and that'll put me on the same cell. Do the calculation. We get the 22,000. Now, if we want to see where we are at as of this point in time now, as of uh, three, five, then I'm going to pull down these same units because these sa the same layer is still there. We can simply do that, but I'm just going to highlight these, going to copy them, and I'm going to paste them by right-clicking and paste them one, two, three values only. So all I'm doing is just saying, okay, this layer is still there as of this row, as of this date. Now we have a new layer here. I'm just going to simply copy these. I'm going to highlight these, copy, right-click, copy and right click on cell K9 and paste them one, two, three. Again, I'm just pasting the values in this case. And so the reason to do that is now we can see that we have two layers. We have a layer that costs 50 and we only have 100 of those. We have a layer that costs 55. Normally prices rise. So over time, this is gonna be an example of rising prices. All else equals, that will be the assumption. If everything else stays the same, usually there's a period of inflation the Fed actually shoots for a period of inflation of, of around 3%. So we expect prices to write all else rise, all else. Now, of course, in real life, all else may not be equal. And there could be things that would decrease the price. But um, in this case, we're going to be dealing with a problem with rising prices, the expected example. Then I'm going to sum these two up. Now we have dollar amount of 5,000 and a dollar amount of 22. I'm going to say this equals the sum of... And I'm going to highlight the 5 and the 22, the 5 plus the 22, and enter. And that'll give us the 27,000. So that would be the amount in our ending inventory. Let's go ahead and post this transaction and see what it would look like in terms of a trial balance type of setting. So I'm going to scroll over here and we're going to put this uh, journal entry in here. 
and I've given us a quick little trial balance just so we can kind of see what would happen. Here's what our trial balance looks like. Uh, we have cash, accounts receivable. Here's our beginning inventory, which I gave for us here, starting at this 5,000. That's where we are at. And then we have cost of goods sold. Nothing's in there right now. And we have net income in this case right here. This is representing a loss because we have the expenses and no income at this time. If we did this purchase, then inventory would go up. Inventory is a debit balance. We're going to go up, make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another debit in this case. How much are we going to debit it for? We're going to debit it for this 22000 that uh, we just recorded. We purchased that. I'm going to assume we purchased it on account, meaning we didn't pay for cash. We bought it on account meaning it's going to go into accounts payable. In this case, we have 12,150 brackets represent credit balances. It needs to go up. So we're going to do the same thing to it, which is a credit. So we're going to debit inventory and credit accounts payable. Let's see what happens if we post that. I'm going to go over here to cell V13 and say this equals, I'm going to kind of post this to our entries column just to see what would happen to this five. That's a debit. This is a debit. They're the same thing. It's going to make this go up in the debit direction that of course made the assets go up as well and we are now out of balance because the assets no longer equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity if we down go down to the accounts payable i'm just going to say this equals this is a credit balance this is a credit balance that's going to make our payable go up to like so puts us back in balance in terms of our accounting equation because our liabilities and equity now equal our assets and we are now in balance here meaning our debits minus the credits plus some more debits now equals zero and we are back in balance no effect on net income notice that uh, net income being down here starting with revenue down here there was no effect because neither of these accounts are income or expense accounts okay let's see what happens next we are now on uh three nine so i'm going to skip a row i'm going to make sure i skip down to this row over here so i'm on b13 i'm going to say this is three nine and what happens on three nine now a sale happened. We sold 420 units at $85. Now this is confusing because oftentimes we think of the $85 as if it needs to go into this worksheet, but this worksheet deals with the cost. That's the sales price. We of course bought it for less than we sold it for. This worksheet deals with how much we bought it for, not how much we sold it for. So we're going to go into the cost of goods sold area in this case because that's the expense side of it relating the cost of what we sold. So in this worksheet, we're concerned with the 420 and we're concerned not with that 85, we're concerned with how much did these cost? Because the 420 that we sold, we have 500 units on, on hand here and they cost 50 or 55. So of course the question is, uh, which ones did we sell? And the assumption is we sold the first ones and in the first out. Therefore, we're going to take the assumption that we sold the older ones first. So of the older ones, we had 100 of those. So in the cost, I'm going to say of these 100, we sold all of those that cost $50. All of these $50 ones we sold. So therefore, equals the cost of 100 times 50, and we've got the 5,000. Then I'm going to say equals the, how many did we sell? 420 minus the 100 means that we need another 320 in order for that plus the 100 to add up to the 420. And those we're going to eat into this 400 that costs $55. All right. So then we're going to have 320 times 55. So the total cost of the goods that we sold under this assumption first in first out is 22.6. Then if we take our layer here, I'm just going to recalculate these layers. I'm going to do it this way of this 100 minus we sold all of them and they cost of course fifty dollars and i'm going to say this equals we have zero left times 50 which of course is zero then of these 400 we're going to say of these 400 minus we sold 320 of them and those items cost us 55 therefore we're going to take the 800 times 55 tab and that gives us the 4,004. So now we have 80 units left after selling the 420 units, leaving us with uh, 80 units at 55 or 4,400. I'm gonna bring that to the side here, just so uh, we have, if there were two layers, we could have this side column as well. 
let's go ahead and post that to our transactions and see what it would look like over here. Now, note again that this only deals with the cost side of it, but we also have to deal with the thing that this worksheet doesn't happen, the thing that we are more accustomed to, which is actually the sales side. How much did we sell it for? Uh, I'm assuming we sold it on account in this example. So we sold it for equals 420 units times 85, the sales price. And then I'm just going to say we're going to debit account receivable and credit revenue. That's our normal sales type entry. It has nothing to do with this worksheet that we're working on. And we'll then go up here and I'm going to say, okay, the accounts receivable in V12 equals the 35.7. This is a debit. That's a debit. Debits are going to go up in accounts receivable. That puts us out of balance. Then we'll go to the sales item here in V16 equals the 35.7. This is going to go up in the credit direction, put us back in balance, bring net income up, meaning that now the credits are being